You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand up for 15 years now? You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? Is to act like it didn't happen. Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. We was in Portofino, we had finished dinner one time. We walking back to go get on this boat. Hey, you're Samuel Jackson, I'm gonna take a picture. He said, what's the magic word, mother? Cat Williams unleashed a verbal onslaught sparing no one, particularly targeting Steve Harvey. Disregarding Steve's famous mustache or Samuel's impeccable comedic timing, Cat alleges that Steve's success isn't as pristine as it appears. Hollywood is abuzz with the feud between Samuel L. Jackson and Steve Harvey. Despite their heavyweight status, they're far from tight. Tension brews between them. The burning question, what skeletons does Steve Harvey have in his closet that have Samuel Jackson ready to confront him? Cat Williams has emerged as a significant whistleblower shedding light on the hidden realities beneath Hollywood's glamorous exterior. With unwavering determination, Cat persists in exposing truths that are shaking the very foundations of the entertainment industry. And the fact of the matter is, we watched this get murdered right in front of our own face. And the knew it was finna happen, he told us, and we didn't know. Cat Williams fearlessly tackles controversial topics that some might find unsettling, confronting issues that seem to draw disapproval from certain factions within the industry. Multiple incidents indicate that Hollywood may be trying to distance itself from Cat, possibly in response to his steadfast and unwavering stance on these matters. Why? Because you know, ain't nobody gonna sleep with him. You only got Tiffany Haddish. She been doing comedy since she was 16. Cat Williams is undeniably recognized as one of the funniest comedians of his time, acclaimed for his raw wit and captivating performances in successful stand-up specials. Despite his talent and respect within Hollywood's comedy circles, Williams hasn't attained the same mainstream exposure as some of his peers. A supporter observed, unlike Kevin Hart, he hasn't pursued leading roles in blockbuster movies, nor does he host a show like Steve Harvey. At times, Williams has voiced feelings of despair, even stating, I'm just gonna go ahead and announce my retirement from stand-up. I'm kinda done. I've already discussed it with my kids. I wasn't really gonna do it on a Seattle street. I was going to Los Angeles and do it in the offices of ICM or Live Nation. Persistent rumors have circulated, suggesting Williams may have been sidelined by the industry, sparking questions about why he hasn't reached the same level of success as figures like Steve Harvey. Notably, Williams and Harvey have had a strained relationship for over a decade, hinting at a significant factor behind their ongoing discord. Well, you know, to be honest with you, Frankie, I didn't I didn't know nothing about this concept. When the promoter told me about it in October, I shot it down. Because that ain't how I've ever promoted a show. But it seems like Samuel L. Jackson has also joined hands with Kat to remind Steve that industry is still not taken over by the evils. Samuel Jackson is known for his humor, but this time, he's not joking around. Rumors are swirling that there's some significant dirt lurking in Steve Harvey's past, known only to a select few. Steve Harvey isn't the type to brush off allegations lightly, and if Samuel is truly preparing to expose something, it could spark a major clash between the two celebrities. Speculation is rampant about what secret Steve might be concerned ceiling and everyone is eager to uncover the truth and been in there about an hour changing radio stations and tv stations every eight minutes or whatever he, he just got Steve Harvey has skyrocketed to fame with his stand-up comedy and daytime talk shows, but not everyone is singing his praises. Surprisingly, Samuel L. Jackson isn't exactly hopping on the Steve Harvey fan train. In an industry where camaraderie among black celebrities is often celebrated, the dynamic between Harvey and Jackson is more akin to oil and water. While there's plenty of examples of strong bonds between stars like Samuel and the late Bernie Mac or Steve and Martin Lawrence, the relationship between Harvey and Jackson is a whole different story. It's as if they just don't quite click, with a noticeable wariness lingering between them. Or, or, or take the praise for what it is, or understand that, okay, if I do this, it's gonna be more trouble than it's worth. That's yeah. right. You know, so a moment of instant gratification. The entertainment industry has been weathering a storm of bad news lately, with some major celebrities finding themselves at the center of controversy. From simply bad to downright inhumane, the headlines have been relentless, and one star who seems to frequently find themselves in the less-than-flattering category is rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Already tangled up in a web of dark headlines, he's back in the spotlight once again, this time embroiled in yet another messy situation involving one of his exes. As I'm so quiet, yeah. there's been so many many stories that yes. have been made up about me like yes. I've seen 
story is about me being like fully in love with somebody and we have like this whole relationship. The interwoven connections between celebrities can sometimes lead to eyebrow raising situations and the involvement of Lori Harvey, daughter of another controversial figure, adds another layer to the intrigue. Rumors suggest that her previous ties with Diddy might not have been entirely conventional, especially considering the proximity to her former flame, Diddy's son. It's a scenario that many would find undeniably peculiar. Speculation now swirls that Lori's relationship with Diddy could have been a means for him to settle some undisclosed debts, not necessarily those of her father's, but possibly her own. While Lori's stunning looks and connections to successful individuals might suggest she had her pick of partners, her involvement with Diddy might have stemmed more from business than genuine affection. This revelation about Diddy and Lori's relationship adds a new dimension to the tangled web of celebrity interactions. And speaking of revelations, Cat Williams has recently dropped a bombshell about another beloved figure, Steve Harvey. According to Williams, Harvey allegedly made a pact involving his soul with Hollywood, a claim that has undoubtedly left many fans stunned and curious about the depths of the entertainment industry's secrets. I think Steve Harvey's some stand-up man. No, I'm a kiss the old girl who owned TV One. He used to kiss. That's how he had to rank. The feud between Cat Williams and Steve Harvey traces back to December 2008, when Williams openly criticized Harvey during a Christmas season show. This public altercation marked the inception of their ongoing conflict, which has endured for over a decade. It's crucial to recognize that both Williams and Harvey have had disagreements with other comedians in the past, and this incident was just one example of their clash within the comedy community. Even one internet user wrote, I think real comedians are born with the talent to make people laugh and to be funny. It's not something that someone can teach you that can give you pointers. Kay can just be present and make you laugh without saying a word, now that's a comedian. Another one added, I love Kat and I don't doubt his word one bit. However, Steve has never claimed to be a saint and has spoke on his past multiple times. Who he was in his past is not who he is today. Fact, he was an at SS hat. Fact, he learned the hard way and consciously took the necessary actions to better himself. Just the same as many do and many more really should. The roots of the feud between Cat Williams and Steve Harvey can be traced back to a bold public challenge issued by Williams. He asserted that he could outshine Harvey and seize the title of the King of Comedy during an upcoming New Year's Eve show where both comedians were headlining. This challenge ignited the flames of their ongoing conflict, setting the stage for years of tension and discord between them. Now, I was on the Steve Harvey show, and Steve Harvey, who is going to call in at 545 and get the f record straight. Allegedly, Jamie Foxx became embroiled in the conflict as well. While working as a radio host, Foxx aired a clip of Cat Williams disparaging Steve Harvey, potentially escalating their feud. Williams, ahead of their joint comedy performance, warned Harvey, I apologize in advance for what's coming, but once you step on that stage, know that it's your last stint as the king of comedy. Things find their own level. You can't halt it, my friend. It is what it is, so brace yourself. You better have a squad of writers. You'll need at least six or seven. In response to the clip, Steve Harvey phoned into the radio show, expressing his confusion over the entire ordeal. Jamie Foxx's involvement added another dimension to the ongoing dispute between Cat Williams and Steve Harvey. You know, I've always been on tour with, with, with some real monsters, man. I toured yeah. with the Kings. You know, I've been on stage with Sid, D.L., and Bernie Mac at the same time. On the much-anticipated evening of the event, Cat Williams seized the spotlight and unleashed a barrage of punches aimed at Steve Harvey's comedic reputation, all while lightheartedly ribbing his attire and hairstyle. Addressing the audience, Williams likely delivered cutting yet humorous jabs at Harvey throughout his performance, quipping, let's hear it for Steve Harvey, one of the greats, but he ain't ready for what's coming tonight, not in any shape or form. I don't get why he's out here with all this money y'all spent on tickets. Talking about some lady in the crowd for 15 minutes but won't give me the same attention I'm about to give his sorry behind. Cat Williams didn't stumble into fame and fortune. He clawed his way up from the streets of Avondale, Cincinnati. He built his comedic empire brick by brick, honing his craft in venues across the nation, from the bustling sidewalks of Oklahoma to the vibrant stages of Oakland. Through sheer grit and determination, Williams fearlessly delivered his routines, crafting a style uniquely his own. And act like ain't 
happened. You in the middle of a goddamn meeting. Now, yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the movie with you, and then we're going we're gonna to go back. When it comes to Steve Harvey, he's often celebrated as a dedicated family man, cherishing his loved ones above all else. Yet Cat Williams challenges this image, suggesting that Harvey is nothing more than a fraud, hiding his authentic self behind a meticulously crafted mask for years. According to Cat, opinions on Steve's comedic talent vary widely depending on who you ask, which adds layers to their relationship dynamics and shapes public perception of Harvey's persona. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. Matter of fact, the whole phrase, king of comedy, can be attributed Indeed, Cat Williams has cemented his place not just as a comedic powerhouse, but also as a prominent whistleblower in Hollywood. His outspokenness extends beyond the stage as he fearlessly addresses a myriad of issues and controversies within the entertainment industry. Williams isn't one to shy away from shining a light on matters that are frequently swept under the rug or ignored altogether. A doing drugs in the ATL, at least excuse himself, go to the bathroom or something. According to Cat Williams, Steve Harvey's public image isn't universally adored. Depending on who you ask, Harvey is either hailed as one of the funniest individuals alive or viewed as a celebrity with a somewhat tarnished reputation. Williams has suggested that Harvey may have undisclosed aspects in his past, including rumors of mistreating his staff. Persistent rumors have circulated about the renowned comedian and talk show host's treatment of his staff. Moreover, after his talk show relocated to Los Angeles, Harvey purportedly issued a controversial memo to his new staff, outlining demands typically associated with tour writers. These allegations have only added fuel to the existing tension between the two comedians. I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room, to sit in my makeup chair, to walk from my dressing room to the stage. In the leaked memo, Steve Harvey wrote, My security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who has the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. That includes TV staff. You must schedule an appointment. I have been taken advantage of by my lenient policy in the past. This ends now. No more. Do not approach me while I'm in the makeup chair unless I ask to speak with you directly. Either knock or use the doorbell. Steve Harvey defended himself by stating that the controversial memo was an attempt to secure more free time during his day. He explained that the memo was sent to address what he perceived as a too lenient open-door policy during his show's run in Chicago. Harvey reiterated this defense a few days later, while discussing the leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight. Look man, I'm in my makeup chair, they walk in the room, I'm having lunch, they walk in, they don't knock, he continued. I'm in the hallway, I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I just said, wait a minute. And in hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little bit differently. Cat Williams seems to have legitimate reasons for his grievances against Steve Harvey. In November 2015, the Think Like a Man author faced a lawsuit for allegedly reneging on plans to lease a private jet. This occurred after over $400,000 worth of renovations had been initiated, reportedly at Harvey's request. The requested enhancements included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls, according to TMZ reports. According to a, a private jet company, he did not pay the bill. This is a fabulous story. After so they he, customized the hell out of the thing. Lived. Cat Williams has also alleged that Steve Harvey, who starred as a high school music teacher on 1996's The Steve Harvey Show, lifted the premise of his show from comedian Mark Curry. Curry starred as teacher Mark Cooper on the sitcom Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, which debuted in 1992. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had, Williams said. Now Steve got a sitcom where he's the principal and he wears a suit. Williams also criticized Harvey's acting abilities, challenging Harvey's claim that he didn't want to pursue a film career. You couldn't be a movie star, Williams said. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You have to have range. In a critical stance on fellow comics Cedric the Entertainer, Steve Harvey, and Ricky Smiley during an appearance on the Club Shay Shay podcast, Williams aimed to address what he considered as untruths spread about him by lowbrow comedians on the show. He characterized Cedric, Harvey, and Smiley 
as a gang, stating, For 30 years they're a group. These aren't three random guys. All of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets, and this is the age of truth. Williams accused Cedric the Entertainer of stealing a joke from his comedy set in the late 90s, a joke he also performed on the BET program Comic View. In describing the situation, Williams stated, This is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. In 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the original Kings of Comedy, and he's doing it verbatim. Initially, Williams had given Cedric a pass for using the joke, but his stance changed when Cedric denied taking from Williams' material. Williams remarked, he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Cedric the Entertainer responded to Williams in the comments section of an Instagram post featuring a clip from the Club Shay Shay podcast, dismissing Williams' allegation as revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims is his, Cedric wrote Wednesday. I've been in over 40 movies. My specials and brand speak volumes for I Am. The people I have put on including Cat in the Hat at the Gibson Amphitheater. So, it seems Steve's ascent to stardom might have played a role in potentially impacting Lori's future. Recently, Sug Knight, a heavyweight in the industry who witnessed Diddy's rise to fame, dropped some bombshells. He insinuated that Diddy has a team to cover up his messes whenever he slips up. And guess who he implicated? You guessed it, Lori's father, Steve Harvey. This former Death Row Records mogul didn't just casually mention Steve Harvey's name as a potential fixer for Diddy. He also hinted at a paper trail connecting Diddy's PR cleanups back to Steve. Now, why would a successful celebrity like Steve stoop to the level of cleaning up someone else's messes, especially when that person, who's roughly the same age as Steve, is dating his daughter? That's the million-dollar question. What's up, boy? <laughs> My man. It appears that according to some self-appointed sleuths on social media, Steve might be deeply entangled with Diddy, and not in a positive light. Here's the scoop. Harvey is undeniably a powerhouse in the industry, and one would assume that would exempt him from having to answer to other entertainers. However, it seems Diddy might be the exception to that rule. Recent reports suggest that Steve might be following orders from the notorious CEO, to the extent that even his own family members aren't immune. Yes, you read that correctly. These allegations don't just revolve around Steve. They also involve his daughter. Over time, there have been murmurs suggesting that Steve Harvey could have been doing Diddy's bidding. I'm very much in a space right now where I'm not doing anything that's going to compromise my peace and happiness. It seems those rumors were more than just hearsay. Recently, amidst the ongoing Tupac saga, Suge Knight, Diddy's longtime adversary, unleashed some bombshells, including revelations about Steve Harvey. Knight questioned the authenticity of the love that the celebrity host professed for the legendary rapper, sparking considerable controversy. Knight portrayed Harvey not merely as a casual associate of Diddy's, but as someone who turned it into a lucrative sideline. He also implied that Harvey was shielding an individual widely suspected to be involved in the demise of the All Eyes on Me artist, intensifying the drama even further. If you love punk so much, how you with that everybody say got something to do with the first get down that happened to punk in New York, then the second one. Does she want to bring up the source of in further unraveling the complex narrative, Knight unveiled Harvey's apparent disregard for Tupac's legacy by downplaying the significance of the infamous East Coast-West Coast feud. This feud not only profoundly impacted Tupac's life, but also claimed the lives of several others, including Biggie Smalls. Yet, Steve appears to have persuaded the public that Diddy bore no responsibility for the violence and turmoil that ensued during that tumultuous period. It appears that cleaning up messes was just the tip of the iceberg for Steve's role with the business mogul. There are suggestions that he might have have been tasked with much more, such as allegedly offering up his own daughter to Diddy. What's even more startling is that Lori's relationship with Diddy might not have been for the reasons the public initially believed. The model and entrepreneur recently addressed these rumors in an interview with E! News, disclosing that she often hears claims about being in a relationship with someone whom she hasn't even met in person. Yeah, I've seen stories about me being like fully in love with somebody and we have like this whole relationship and I'll see the guy and I'm like, I've actually never even met him before. Lori's 
denial of dating the music mogul despite being spotted with him on multiple occasions has left fans questioning whether Diddy may not be the person they thought he was. This speculation is fueled further by recent lawsuits against him. Following Cassie's allegations of assault and battery against Diddy, rumors have begun swirling within fan circles and industry chatter. There's speculation that numerous women are prepared to come forward and testify against Diddy if Cassie pursues legal action. This scenario mirrors high-profile cases involving figures like R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, and Harvey Weinstein, where a wave of testimonies played a crucial role in legal proceedings. Amidst these serious allegations, the substantial lawsuit contends that Combs used his influential network to entrap Cassie in a violent and controlling relationship. Moreover, Steve's recent post raised questions about his relationship with Bernie Mac. Over the past decade since his passing in 2008, Bernie Mac fans have been uncovering surprising details about his professional relationship with fellow comedian Steve Harvey. Despite the perception that the two original kings of comedy were close friends, many have been shocked to learn allegations that the host of Family Feud reportedly appropriated Mac's jokes and even tried to have him ousted from a movie role. The allegations of joke theft resurfaced following Cat Williams' candid interview on Club Shay Shay in January. This resurgence occurred months after Harvey faced criticism over rumors of his wife Marjorie supposedly being unfaithful and seeking a divorce. Harvey appears to be focused on moving forward and leaving the past behind, as indicated by his most recent post. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending, he shared on X. While this post garnered praise from many social media users, there's one individual who appears unable to let go of the past. That's what you did with the Mac and y'all forgot about that, the user wrote. But Harvey's post did receive some praise from others who said, I know that's right, and you're the author of your own story. Write a new chapter and rise above the past negativity. The purported beef between Harvey and the Chicago native has been a topic of discussion among many entertainers and fellow comedians who admired both of their comedic talents. Allegedly, the two did not see eye to eye during the tour for the original Kings of Comedy film alongside Cedric the Entertainer and D.L. Hewley in 2000. More than a decade later, reports emerged that the star of The Steve Harvey Show was competing for Mac's role in Ocean's Eleven. Harvey was supposedly willing to accept less pay than Mac to portray the role of the blackjack-dealing conman Frank Catton. In this Hollywood game that we're in, it's a cold game, Bernie reportedly expressed in a 2003 interview with Ebony Magazine. And the sad thing about it is all of us are doing well, so I don't don't really see the problem. Hip-hop pioneer Ed Lover recently corroborated these claims on The Culture Club Uncensored, affirming that the legendary comic remained true to himself. After The Kings of Comedy, Bernie never changed. Bernie didn't let Hollywood or success or anything go to his head. He was always the Mac man, Lover stated. Lover further reiterated Bernie's alleged sentiment, saying, All I can say is what Bernie told me. And he was upset with Steve because he said Steve tried to get him taken off of Oceans, the Oceans movie he did, and tried to vie for his part after he already got hired. And, uh, Bernie never lied to me. That's all I'm going to say. He was my friend. I loved him. The original Kings of Comedy remains one of the most iconic and successful documentaries of its genre. The film followed the four comedians as they traveled across the country, filling 25 000-seat arenas. Harvey played more of a hosting role, while the audience was treated to jokes about their lives, money, music, and families. Many still vividly remember Bernie Mac's unforgettable jokes from the live show at the Charlotte Coliseum in Charlotte at North Carolina. From his hilarious takes on black funerals to anecdotes about his sister's kids who always wanted milk and cookies before bed, Mac's comedic genius left audiences in tears of laughter. One person wrote, I am cackling, I love Bernie Mac, the milk and cookies joke is my favorite. Many fellow artists supported Cat's idea, but one was particularly supportive. Ed Lover appears to have corroborated Cat Williams' assertions regarding Steve Harvey and his challenges with Bernie Mac. The renowned DJ released a fresh episode of his Simon Son podcast providing support for Williams' narrative as shared on the recent episode of the Club Shay Shay podcast. He Williams goes on to say that he was supposed to be one of the kings of comedy, that they approached him after Bernie passed, he shared in the episode, but he didn't want to go on the kings of comedy tour because of Steve Harvey's treatment of Bernie Mac. He has a lot of respect for Bernie Mac. Ed Lover, explaining his friendship with Bernie Mac until his passing, continued, the stuff that Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey calling to try to get Bernie's role on Ocean's Eleven, and that kind of stuff? Bernie told me out of his own mouth. 
I believe Bernie Mac when he said Steve Harvey hated on him, he concluded. So Ed Lover's statements prove that what Kat was saying about Steve and other Hollywood kings was right. There also have been reports indicating that Bernie was actively seeking to bring to light purported unethical activities within Hollywood. Emerging revelations hint at the possibility that Mac may have been deliberately sidelined by influential figures in the entertainment industry. It wasn't just his resistance to adhering to the prevailing do-anything-for-fame-and-fortune mindset that made him a target. Instead, it was his outspoken criticism of a questionable agenda promoted by some of his industry colleagues. Macmillan's readiness to critique and oppose this agenda may have left him in a vulnerable position within the industry. So nevertheless, Bernie Mac was introduced to the clone lab. They, they take you there. They took him there. They let him see the, the fight. And so given Samuel's fearless nature of speaking against every evil thing in the industry, Steve should be feared of him. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.